G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a clip called How a Man Becomes Cold Hearted. And I'm gonna add in my input along the way. So without further ado, let's go. This is a question that a lot of people still had quite a hard time putting their fingers on. How does a man become so emotionally distant and cold? Not occasionally or only when they have a bad day, but all the time, like literally. To a point where one could say that he is a pathological psychopath, or a person who simply doesn't have a space in his heart for any kind of empathy. A robot made of actual flesh and bones. Terminator. Some people might say that they're just born with it, but I think the same people also secretly have the notion that it might have something to do with their upbringings. And they'd be right, because quite a lot of our attitudes, behaviors, and characteristics are actually formed during our childhood. The role that our parents and environments play in terms of cultivating and forming the foundational base within our psyche is absolutely critical for our adult years. So All right. So yeah, I think he's got a really good point there. I think that's true. So I'll stop at a key point, so he might even double up on what I say, but I just want to give you my thoughts um, as they are stoked. The fire is stoked in my mind. But you have to think about it um, in these terms. So if you have, um, let's have two kids, two little boys. The first little boy um, comes from a very um, solid, um, traditional, uh, loving family where mum and dad love each other. Uh, mum and dad don't fight in front of the kids. Mum and dad are still together. There's no divorce um, and anything or any sort of grievances or negative stuff are shielded from the kid. Uh, and so he never sees them. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't know any different that, uh, apart from that. Mum and dad and life and marriage and family is all perfect, and that's the way it should be. And then you have the second child. Your second child who might come from a broken home, dysfunctional family, uh, a step family, uh, and they've seen mum and dad being divorced one, two, three times. Um, partners come and go. Say they're living with a single mum. Single mum. There's um. Guy, she's on plenty of fish. This is plenty of fish. Single mum. She's little barriers. I talk about lying there in his um, his little single bed, the bedroom next door in his little room, while mum's getting her guts pounded out by by Brycey and and Steve-O, Sometimes both at the same time, while he's lying there with his turtles blanket on, you know, with his uh, lava lamp next to the bed, and it's the lava lamp shaking because mum's getting her guts, you know, dug out. You know, guys coming, guys going, middle of the night. Um, there could be alcohol, other substances involved. So then this, this kid uh, and then kid one grow up um, with very different perceptions um, on the world. Um, kid, kid one doesn't, doesn't know anything but positivity, doesn't understand that bad things happen. He's been sheltered. It's been wrapped up in um, bubble wrap. And, and these are a lot of the guys who become uh, the real plugged in guys uh, who follow the societal script because mom and dad teach them that, school teaches them that, uh, university teaches that, um, government um, and media. And they never question anything because that's just the way it is and why would anyone lie to you and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got the child B who's a lot more cynical uh, in his life. He's more of a critical thinker and looks at things for what they are uh, and, and scratches below the surface because he has seen the life isn't as perfect as life portrays and maybe what he's peers and friends portray in life. And so he grows up very different. He grows up uh, guarded. He, he he grows up with eyes in the back of his head, so to speak. He's always looking for someone that's trying to potentially one-up him or with women um, that might um, take advantage of him. Where the other guy doesn't do that. He, well, he's a lamb to the slaughter. Someone who has a very affectionate and caring parents will lead to him displaying a lot of care, warmth yeah, and go. empathy towards the people that they are close with. Similarly, someone who has a distant, disregarding and unaffectionate parents or parents who rarely or barely showcase a caring, considerate and intimate attitude towards their children early on will eventually lead him to display a lack of compassion, generosity and sentiment towards other people. Just I, I, I don't know about that. Um, yes, I, I think people are um and i think maybe if they come from a very uh broken home with a lot of bad stuff going on yeah i think that's that's true but the guy the kid i'm talking about it's more just saying that women and mum isn't sugar and spice and all things nice this is more around women and not so much becoming a robot in life but i can see how if someone came from a very say someone's coming from uh, commission housing where there might be a lot of um, violence. I'm not saying everyone who is low socioeconomic status, uh, you know, is is um, 
from a bad lot of circumstances, but the prevalence of that would be very high. I went to high school with kids from uh, commission homes and a lot of them had a lot of problems and were violent and all that sort of stuff at school, especially the boys. Because they are quote-unquote conditioned to behave or have an attitude like so, they are not born with it, they are just incidentally accustomed to be like it. However, it is not just our childhood that could cause us to form a solid foundation of certain attitudes, behaviours and characteristics. As I'm sure you gentlemen know already, major traumatic events could also play a vital role in shifting or rearranging one's psychological blueprint, even in our adulthood. Experiencing trauma usually leads to an individual forming what I call the counter-biasness. Basically, in a specific circumstance where you encounter a traumatic event, you will more than likely develop a set of attitudes and behaviours that completely oppose against anything that is closely related or associated yeah. to that event. For example, if you nearly drowned yourself in the ocean, you will more than likely try to avoid submerging yourself in the bathtub Makes or even sense. going close to a mildly deep swimming pool in the future. If you burned yourself quite significantly, you will more than likely become extra cautious of anything that is easily flammable or discard anything that is associated with fire, like a matchstick. It's all part of our survival instincts and natural defense mechanism. Our extreme emotional reactions that we experience during major traumatic events will always be significantly potent enough to register a pre-encounter defensive response. That's what I find really interesting. So once again, I think that's a really good point. So say, yeah, you as a kid, you fell in a swimming pool and you almost drowned. You're going to be scared of deep water. You might not want to go scuba diving, jumping in the ocean, even going in a pool, going anywhere near where you might feel um, uh, at risk uh, of something triggering uh, a response. Same with uh, burning. You put your hand on the stove, uh, you grab the hot uh, frying pan and you've got second or third degree burns or something like that. You're going to be very careful around fire. People understand that. But why doesn't society um, understand, or women understand, and this is, where, this is the point of the video that I'm getting to, is when men go through really bad experiences with women, like life-changing experiences, whether it be a really bad breakup, um, regardless of how long you were together, but say you were de facto, um, married, um, you, you made a huge commitment um, that was betrayed in one way, shape, or form, you weren't valued in any way, and it really changed the way that you looked at the world. So a lot of guys go through this um, when they get divorced or have uh, bad experiences with women who might use the law against them, uh, might say that they um, uh, are nasty and um, hit them and stuff like that. And guys can't understand, you know, and they might not be true. And then the police come and this guy just, life goes downhill, right? Um, kicked out of his house, put in jail, all sorts of stuff because someone who they thought they trusted um, lied, betrayed them in the worst way possible. Um, and ultimately caused them to have a negative response with that event. So if we're talking about, and then that becomes women, it becomes women with dating. And a lot of guys have this, some guys never learn, but societal shames men for being more careful. So they have a bad event, they might marry the wrong woman. And I always say, if you've married the wrong woman, most of the time it's on you because there would have been signs, etc., and you went along with the flow, right? But say you've married the wrong woman, you've been through a shocking divorce, um, you've lost all your stuff, you're starting from life again at 35, 40, 50, however old, 60, however old you are, you're still ashamed for being careful and being emotionally unavailable, as they call it. You know, And my, and my translation for emotionally unavailable, um, which women shame men about being, which they shame you for being stunted or underdeveloped um, emotionally or, or you're a commitment phobe, um, my translation for that is no, your eyes are open and you're more risk averse now. You do a risk analysis on women. You do a risk analysis of situations. You work out if that woman is worth a cost, um, whether it's money up front, if you're thinking you want to go on dates, you actually think about what you're getting out of it. A lot of guys do after having bad experiences and they're making a decision from there. That's why a lot of women are complaining that men don't want to take them on dates and spend money on them and all that because a lot of guys are waking up. They're, they're, they're getting having bad experiences on dating apps or going through divorces, all that stuff. Like obviously divorce has been happening forever, but it's happening more on mass now on dating apps. People going and having bad experiences. Now they don't want to pay to take women on dates. Women are complaining that I want to go for coffee or for walks and all that. And then those people are shamed for not wanting to pay because they're waking up and having a risk assessment and they're commitment phobes. They're not investing, <laughs> which is to me, which is interesting. But what is one of the key things that men men go through and it turns them, I call it the villain arc as well. Like I've been through a villain arc. Um, as I said, I, I've probably explained it in other videos. 
that I've made um, was I had like a really, to me, um, a really traumatic time when um, I went through a bad breakup with or, or my, my ex separated from me, my ex-wife, and that changed the way that I looked at marriage forever. That, that changed the way I looked at um, serious relationships with women forever. And while I'm not the perfect guy, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't Mr. You know, Ned Flanders or anything like that. I thought I did a pretty good job, but I didn't get anything out of that. What did I get out of that? I, I lost money. I had to pay legal fees. I had to go through the family court system. I had to go through all that stress. You know, I just bought a house that I invested all my money into. That was at risk of being lost. It was the most stressful six months of my life. So why, why then? You go out on the dating scene after them. So I went through that villain arc where I just did not care. I was not letting anyone anywhere near me. Um, I wasn't going to uh, encourage the idea or even think of the idea um, of opening myself up to being anywhere near women because they can cause a lot of damage for the wrong ones in. And so you go through your villain arc and if you can, you go on dating apps and you start being an absolute pricey. Um, like I, I'll say my second run on the dating apps after my divorce, think about it. I was like, I used to be, I'll say more wholesome when I was younger. I was always a bit of a steve but I was a bit more wholesome. I was a bit more positive, a bit more optimistic about women and thinking I was getting a real special thing when I was, whenever I was able to get one, right? Um, think about it, it's like Hulk Hogan in the 1980s when he was the red, white, um, uh, you know, have your vitamins and say your prayers and do your weights and you can be like Hulk Hogan and life's positive. When I went and had my second stint after I got separated. I had my villain arc. I was like Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you know, with the black, you know, with the black gear and um, that, that different vibe, that more, I turned, I turned heel, boys. I had a heel turn. And I just would say that because I had that bad experience, you probably overcompensate in some extent and become, <laughs> become a bit of a monster. So that's why I stopped doing it. I had a bit of a rampage for about four or so years. Um, three or four years, I'd say just relentless, relentless, um, probably being something that um, really I probably wasn't proud of. I had a lot of fun along the way, but when I reflect now, I'm probably not proud of some of the things I did, some of the sort of conduct as well. So I own up to that, but I had heaps of fun. Um, but at the expense, um, maybe of other people who didn't maybe deserve to be treated that particular way. So you get your villain arc, you go through a bad time, you become cold hearted, you don't care, you don't expose yourself you cut people off. So I'm sure there's plenty of you guys who've probably been through that. Anyway, guys, about halfway through. So if you're enjoying the content, please uh, subscribe uh, to the channel. And the best way to support me, guys, is watching through. I'll play the rest of the video now and I'll chime in. But I really want to make that point before, guys, about what it is like and, and, and why guys become cold, especially in relation to women. That was the main point of this video and is the main point. And I'll continue on relating or surrounding that specific circumstance. Similarly, if a man's well or extensively invested care, warmth and intimacy towards someone and or a group of people is abruptly taken away or worse betrayed, he will more than likely develop an integral response to shun himself from forming a very close bond with anyone in the future. Developing an avoidant attachment syndrome where if he feels like he is starting to catch feelings with anyone, being too friendly with anyone or getting a bit too intimate for comfort, he will abruptly back out and detach himself from expressing his feelings or displaying any form of empathy and consideration. A bit Absol of absolutely, like that, ab that is spot on. That is exactly how I was behaving there. Um, fully own that, fully own up to that. A lot of guys say, no, 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 but no, I was becoming almost sociopathic. Um, um, to the point, guys, that's why I don't do it anymore. Because while I was successful at it, the things you need to do to successfully basically womanize and play the field, you've got to be a really dishonest person. You've got to be, you got to have some traits. You've got to be like Dirty John. And I didn't like, I didn't like what, what I was doing. You know, I just didn't think it was who I was. So that's why I've stopped. And I, my life is much happier since I've stopped doing that. Um, stopped going and using dating apps and just running up the numbers. Because... As I said, guys, like anything, um, you get sick of it. Um, you get sick of people. You have to also deal with heaps of women. Um, and they're a pain in the ass. They make you even more bitter and jaded because you go through heaps of those and deal with situations with heaps of bloody nutcases. It's of a necessary evil to contain some underlying insecurities and in order to protect himself from those traumatic consequences. Such examples can be a man who had a very close relationship with his parents, spends a tremendously meaningful amount of time with them, but then they got abruptly taken away in a horrific accident. 
A man who developed a seemingly unbreakable bond of association or camaraderie with someone, but then got dramatically broken due to underlying envy or jealousy manifesting into a stab in the back. And a man who sincerely and wholeheartedly loved yeah, a woman point, for a yeah. long time with all his trust and faith, but then she suddenly betrayed his commitment unreasonably out of nowhere. Though having said all of Yeah, so I think that, that last point there was a very, very much, um, very reasonable thing that causes men to become cold-hearted. And I would say, put you on your villain arc. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there who are watching, you could maybe resonate with me uh, on this video, sort of me going a bit deeper and giving you a bit more information about myself and my thought process. But yeah, I, that, that's exactly how I felt. And I know that's how other guys I know that are very close to me who have had similar things happen is yes, you, you're bought into the dream um, you laid everything down on the line, um, you committed your finances, you committed almost your life, your free time, your energy um, to a woman. Um, and you thought that if you do that, you're going to get something great in return. You're going to have a good life, an easy life. She's going to be, not an easy life, but a supportive wife who will make your life better um, and will give you, you know, the support you need to succeed in life. And while some guys do get that, I'll say it's in the minority. And what a guy normally end up with is is one or two situations. They end up with nagging wives, people belittling them, um, chipping away at their self esteem, and then eventually abandoning them. Or the second way is they have all those things plus they stay and they lock they lock in, and they don't move on because of the sunk cost fallacy and all the bad things that they're going to have to go through as a result. And so they live separate lives under the same roof and they're unhappy and they become cold hearted and distant uh, in that way. Um, but it's more the first point, which I think a lot of men go through. It doesn't have to be a wife. It doesn't have to be someone that you truly invested in, but in terms of finances and commitment, but it could be someone that you invested in with uh, emotion um and as men i think men are true romantics i don't think women are romantic at all i think women receive romance from men who are the romantics you have to come up with ideas to be chivalrous and um, be generous and and show with gifts or whatever it is um uh, displays of affection or uh, acts of service and all this sort of bullshit that that men do women receive those things women aren't the romantic women will say they're romantic but they like romance because they receive it and so men give all this romance and and i guess you could say as part of giving that romance is giving a part of yourself being vulnerable uh, to somebody and then having it thrown back in your face uh, or blatantly just you know um disregarded i think that's what guys go into a dark place go into a place of um negativity they become cold um towards women um they go into their villain arc as i said and they go down the uh the rabbit hole um you start going through uh youtube um you might be experiencing that now i, I went through this guys i went through this i went through that that rabbit hole you start looking for answers as i said my wife walked out on me i came home with her moved out um she'd taken some stuff and moved out of the house still didn't tell me about it um and so i was like what the hell i didn't know what happened you go through the rabbit hole you, you don't know what's happening it's shock you get blindsided and that then traumatic experience really closes you off um, to the prospects of ever wanting to put yourself in that position again. And I think that's what a lot of women don't understand. It's the pain and agony a lot of men go through with divorce, especially um, when it comes to children. I don't have children, so I can't speak for this, but I've seen this with a really good friend of mine close to me, um, children alienated from him, uh, from his side of the family. Um, you know, it's shocking what happens and that isn't talked about um, in society and why men are just talked about like they can't have emotions and trauma from things that are done to them by women. <laughs> like, anyway, that's what this video is about, guys. So opening up a little bit to you guys so you can know a little bit more about me. Um, and, you know, you guys out there, um, hopefully it makes you feel somewhat, you got some sort of solidarity, uh, camaraderie, knowing that there are guys out there, a lot of guys watch my channel and write to me who have been through these things. So, you know, listening to somebody who has actually been through it too. Um, so if you're having a hard time, guys, you can always email me as well. But the point of this is, guys going through the villain arc um, mostly is caused by women, um, especially in the later half of their lives where they might have some really horrible experiences. Let's play this out. All of these, not all men will surely become emotionally withdrawn due to these traumas. 
Some men can become consumed with rage and vindictive pursuits that they condemn everything and everyone that is involved with their misfortunes. Or in other words, becoming the embodiment of the victim mentality. Yes, However, it's going to take a lot of time, convincing, maturity, and most importantly, answers to lingering, unresolved personal questions in order for him to embrace that part of his humanity once again. Because as yeah, I think I think I think that's a really good point. Like I think like, let's admit it, as humans, everyone wants that dream. Everyone, everyone would love to have someone who's a ride or die and be with them in life. But I think it's a very hard thing when she realised that a lot of the time it's a fool's game to expose yourself to that. And while you might want it, I don't think a lot of guys ever put themselves back on the line again. Uh, and I also recommend, um, as I talk about in some of my other videos, a lot of guys rush into. Um, they go through these traumatic experiences. They're not healed. They haven't done the work. Because you've you got to do work, man. you got to... Uh, that was a part of me, stop womanizing, guys. I had to do the work. I had to stop doing that. I need to focus on my life. Um, my mental health, too. I'm not a robot. Um, and, and, and process the change of life and lifestyle from what I formerly had um, and create a new life. And so I think until you've done that, I don't recommend really running around chasing women. I know it's easy for me to say, I did that, I made that mistake. Um, but running around chasing women, getting validation from women because you've got this huge gaping hole that you need to heal. Uh, you're trying to fill it with short-term uh, validation or, or whatever it might be. Or, or, or what other guys might do is they resort to substances to numb themselves. They don't ever do the work. Um, resort to alcohol and other substances to self-medicate. Could be food, could be everything. Um, so anyway, guys, that's why this is basically how, um, some men can be chewed up and spit out by society. Not so much of a positive video, this one, but I think it was worth making. I saw this clip and I thought it gave me the idea to have a bit of more of a serious talk with you guys and say, I've been through the trenches as well. I've coming out the other side and I have come out the other side. Life's good. Life's great. So there's always, um, a light at the end of the tunnel for you. Um, you just need to pursue through the, 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 the dark days, um, and life does get better. But also in saying that, and the main point as well I'd like to make is don't rush back in. Don't rush back in. Guys do that. They they they, they, they find a new woman and that one new woman might seem amazing because you compare the new woman to the version of your ex-partner or wife, whatever it is, the, ex, the version of them that was at the end of the relationship that was dysfunctional or you're fighting. And you see, you're comparing this new shiny thing, this new shiny object to something that was old and rusty. Of course, it looks better. But guys don't. And then they get you know, um, enamored, sucked into that. And next thing you know, you're living with a chick or, or you're stuck in a situation you don't want to be. And it's a repeat of the first situation. So guys, we're trying to warn you on that as well. Um, anyway, look, that's enough from me, guys. If you agree, uh, disagree, resonated with this video, uh, Share your comments um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching this far if you've made it. Thank you.